M110 is the final object on Messier's catalogue, and there's plenty to say about it. But also, as a special treat for this video, we're going to be using that, the Isaac Newton telescope, to take an image of it. Now, of course, that's a busy scientific instrument, and they're about to do some serious science tonight, and we've only got a few minutes during twilight before they start doing some real work. So let's head down and see what M110 looks like. So the telescope is in the room next to us, and that is important to keep the temperature uh, separate, so it's quite nice and warm in here, whereas the temperature in the telescope is trying to be as close as possible to the temperature outside to minimise turbulence. We've loaded a catalogue which has the coordinates of all the Messier objects, and I just type in the command. It's right at the end of the list, and so since some of these later ones were actually added very late on, it, Messier 110 actually only became a Messier object in 1967. Well, 1967, Messier was long gone. He was a bit, yes, out of it by then. He didn't know about it, and in fact he drew a picture of it. Messier 110 is a companion of Messier 31, the Andromeda Galaxy, and when he drew a very pretty picture of the Andromeda Galaxy, he actually showed that there was a companion galaxy there. And since he was then attributed with having pretty much discovered this galaxy, uh, then when they were revising the Messier catalogue in the 1960s, they decided it should be one of the ones that gets added onto the list. So now we can see some of the numbers changing. It's flashing that the dome and the telescope are moving to this coordinate. Now we're going to start exposing. So this is just the telescope control, and here we've got the instrument control system. First I'll just do a glance. So a glance will be just a quick image. To, to look at whether you have the right number of counts. What's a count? It's how many photoelectrons um, you have. Ideally, for this type of CCD, you want to have your counts between, say, 20,000 and 40,000. So now we've got the camera shutter open, and it's just collecting light. We can do it in the red filter. There are different filters that you can take images in got, for example, visible or blue or very specific filters, like if you're looking for H-alpha or oxygen-3. And the red filter is quite general. I've asked for 60 seconds and it says it's got 20 seconds already. It's a little dwarf elliptical galaxy. It's not very centrally concentrated, so it's a fairly diffuse elliptical galaxy. M32 and M110 are the two brightest companions of the Andromeda galaxy and that's why they get their own numbers. The easy ones to find have all been found. As you get fainter and fainter, they actually get harder and harder to find. And of course the other thing that's quite tricky is you've got the Andromeda galaxy there. And so you've got the galaxy here. As long as the companion's some way off where the light of the galaxy is, you'll detect it. But if it's actually right in front of or behind the Andromeda galaxy, you see it against the bright light of the galaxy. It's actually very hard to pick out these little faint companion galaxies when they're projected against the main light of the galaxy. Now it's reading out. So it's taking all the photons that it's collected in, in the little bins of the CCD and it's just reading them out row by row. So there it is. Whoa! What do you think? Yeah, it's cool. So I can hover the cursor over the different stars and measure the counts. And over 65,000 is saturated. So I've got 5,000 counts. That looks all right. One of the unsolved problems in astronomy is why objects like M110 are so rare. The conventional picture is that there's a sort of hierarchy of the way that galaxies form. So little things form first, and then the little things merge to form bigger things, and so on and so on. So little galaxies like M110 would be some of the first things that form, and then various of those would then all merge together to produce bigger and bigger halos, but there would always be quite a lot of the little things left over. And so they're sort of, the, if you like, they're the builder's rubble, the bits that are left over when you build a big galaxy. And because galaxy formation is not very efficient in that sense, then you, have lots, you should have lots of these little things left over. And the surprise is there just aren't very many of them. So what have you done now, Dora? That looks completely different. What are we looking at now? Yeah, so we've just uh, rescaled the uh, brightness to be able to see the centre more clearly and how it extends further out. And you can see it's an elliptical galaxy because you don't see any spiral arms. Stars are massive things. They're amazing. Galaxies are even more amazing. So when you think about something like M110, this is an amazing thing. This is a huge galaxy full of stars, 
and yet we're talking about it like this tiny piece of rubble next to this bigger thing, like it's almost nothing. Do you ever stop yourself and think, I can't believe I'm treating something as important as galaxies with such disdain? Absolutely, although I guess the thing you've got to bear in mind is there's billions of galaxies out there in the universe, and if we really stopped to worry about each one individually, we would very rapidly run out of time to do anything at all. So you do actually have to, unfortunately, be quite dismissive of them and actually try to pick out, well, what is it that's interesting about this particular object, rather than getting too hung up on, well, I should you know, spend the rest of my life studying this one galaxy.